Hi, I'm Jeff Lenoski, and I'm here with some tips to help you improve your drops on your mountain bike. About a month ago, I made a vlog and I asked my viewers to submit videos on Instagram using the hashtag trailboss so that I could watch you shred. There were some awesome videos submitted, but there were also some trail fails. And those riders seem to be having trouble doing drops on their mountain bike. So I decided to make a video using that footage and some of my own to give you some tips to help make your drops more consistent. So let's dive into some of those videos. So the first video is from Raheem and he technically pulls it, but it was close. Let's take a look. So Raheem rolls in at the drop. He looks like he has good speed, pretty good position, barely makes it, lands pretty nose heavy. And I have some tips that could help him improve that. The second rider up is John and he sent me three different versions of this video, two crashes and one success. So he finally did learn it, but let's take a look at the fail video. So he rolls in, tries to drop off the roof, lands front heavy, makes some pretty dramatic sound effects and goes off the trail. Now this last video is basically the reason I decided to make this how-to. This floated around online with some of my friends from Facebook. I got it from the publishers over at MTBR. This one was a doozy. Let's take a look. Now this rider rolls into this rock drop off, pretty decent speed, pulls up okay, but his back wheel hangs up and he face plants really, really hard. I know this rider was okay afterwards, but you can tell he hits the ground pretty hard. So I'm gonna give you some tips so that this never happens again. Now that we watch those videos in real time, let's go through in slow motion and figure out what went wrong. Now Raheem rolls into this drop with great speed, but as he gets a little bit closer, the lip is slightly flat or maybe even upward. So that's gonna hang up his back tire. So he does a nice compression as he goes into it, but then he just springs back at his hips, lifts the front wheel, and it's not enough to allow his back wheel from getting snagged, and that almost sends him over the handlebars. The next one up is John. When we do this one in slow motion, you can see again, he rides in with pretty decent speed, but he only bends his elbows a little bit and then thrusts back his upper body. He's not bending his knees, and he's trying to just lever at his hips and lift the front wheel. Since he's not manualing super far, his back tire hangs up at the top of the lip, and then he goes real nose heavy, and then that causes him to lose control, and he goes over the bars. Now here's the worst one. This rider rolls in at the drop off at a decent speed. Takeoff is flat. Since he's approaching on a downhill, it's almost gonna act like a little bit of a kicker. So when he lifts the front wheel to counteract, his back tire hangs up, and that's what sends him over the bars. So let's take a look at this in slow motion. He's compressing his arms. He's got pretty decent extensions, but as you can see, he's not doing much to unweight with his leg. So when he goes off the end, and he lifts up his front wheel a little bit, this little undulation in the rock is just enough to hang up his back tire and send him over the bars. So right here is the moment where he loses his move, and then it's right over the handlebars. Now that we've identified one of the main problems with all three of these drop examples, I'm gonna give you some tips and some drills to improve yours. I'll use either two rocks or a line on the ground to form an imaginary takeoff and then I could lift my front wheel at that point and make sure that my back wheel travels past it. I roll into my imaginary drop, I compress my arms and my knees. That's the difference with some of the mistakes these other riders are making. They're only compressing their arms and then I'm lifting my front wheel at the imaginary takeoff, I'm springing up with my knees and then that way my entire bike is unweighted, not just shifting all my weight to the back tire and then I manual or wheelie past the takeoff point. The reason you don't wanna have all your weight on your back tire and you wanna to try to spring up and unweight it is so that when you don't manual quite long enough, if there's some kind of imperfection in the ground, it's not gonna hang up your back tire and send you over the bars. By unweighting your body, it'll increase your chances of pulling these drops. Other than a good preload, the next thing that's gonna help your drops is your speed. Sometimes you can't go fast, but by going a little bit faster, it allows your bike to travel further quicker and you don't have to hold that wheelie quite as long to make the drop. So hopefully you have some of the basic fundamentals down, but if the concept of preloading still eludes you, I'm gonna give you a funny example here. Now, if I told you to do a push up and clap your hands, you wouldn't sit there and just push up without bending your elbows and try to clap your hands. You would barely even get your hands off the ground. When you try to do a drop without bending your elbows or by only throwing your upper body back, 
this is basically what you're doing. If you bent your elbows and compress your chest towards the handlebars or your chest to the ground, when you sprung up, your body would be weightless and then you would be able to clap your hands. This is the same thing as lifting your handlebars off the ground. Instead of lifting your handlebars with all your body weight on it, you dip down so that you can come up. Pretty simple concept and I think doing the push up really helps explain it. Let's take it to an actual drop. So this is at Mountain Creek. You can see I roll to the end of the ladder bridge and at this point I'm already preloading. My elbows are bent and my knees are bent. I've preloaded. I'm beginning to extend my upper body. You can see my arms straightening out and then as my back tire gets to the end my legs are straightening out. This is the big difference between some of the mistakes that you've seen earlier and pulling these drops consistently. If my back tire was to hit something here, all my weight isn't on the back wheel and I could travel over it a lot easier than if I was just manually on the back wheel. After that, I drop off and match the landing. Let's check it out from a different angle. As I approach the drop off, you can see I'm bending my elbows and my knees. This is really important. As I get closer, I'm straightening my elbows, I'm lifting my chest and back up, but then you see my legs are straightening right there. So they go from bent to straight. That means I'm unweighting my bike. So it's just giving me a little bit more of time to get off that drop. One more time from one more angle. As I get close, I bend my elbows, my knees are bent, I'm sighting up the takeoff, and then I'm lifting my chest by preloading into the handlebars and then my knees extend up. So now my entire bike is unweighted slightly. I lift the front tire, spot the landing, match it, and ride away. Those are my top tips for improving your drop technique. If you're gonna ride technical trails, you're gonna come up on some drops. Having the proper technique is gonna allow you to clean them more consistently and avoid face plants. So remember, preload with your arms, dip your chest to the handlebars, bend your elbows, and spring upward. You also want to bend your knees and time it so that you spring up with your legs at the same time. That's going to unweight your back tire and prevent it from hanging up on any kind of obstacle that might exist on the drop. Hopefully you find this video useful and you can use some of these techniques to make your drops more consistent. If you like it, make sure you hit the like button and if you want to see more, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you're having trouble with any moves out on the trail, Post a link to a YouTube video below or go on Instagram and use the hashtag trailboss. Let me know what you'd like some help with and I can make some future videos giving you some tips on other moves. This video was a ton of fun to make, but it's time for me to go ride. So until next time, I'll see you out on the trail.